Hello everyone. Today I got lucky. Got a project here that needs to be done. There's a uh, excavator that farmers being used. But we unhooked a battery. That's number one. And I got the ground hooked up here on the boom only. And there's a crack right here at the bottom of the boom where there's a reinforcing pad and we're wondering if it's broken also back behind here. So I want to carbon arc this out and we'll see what's going on behind it. Hey everyone, I just wanted to cut in here real quick and let you know where the settings are in the machine. Now Lincoln, in the book, it suggests 300 amps and on high. This is the fine-tuned setting and it's on high. I chose to go at 225. Arc Air says to put the 3 16 rod at 200 to 250 amps. And I chose it there and I liked it and the stinger is on the positive and that's hooked up to the torch the arc air torch and the negative which is hooked up to the ground and the reason this is on max is because of the volt amp curve you want maximum voltage I don't know if you could read that or not but it says carbon arc gouging constant current now this is out of lincoln electric well that welding machine a ranger 300d and the dlx which the d stands for diesel so it says recommendation of 316 welding rod range switch 300 now that's the large selector switch and then it says polarity DC positive that will hook up to your torch the output setting that's the fine-tuned setting control at 10 that is max and then it says start gouging now it also says in some of the other settings that you can have the idle control on and I like the idle control off that way it's at maximum RPMs it's not jolting on that bearing and I get a clean good arc weld or excuse me an arc gouge when I get a good start to cut it and sometimes I like it that way also when I'm welding with 7018 or any other rod um, I just like that good start my arc air k2000 is probably the smallest one that they make but it's plenty and what i get in that these there's three holes right here if you can't see them that there are there, actually there's four one two three four and i like that closest to the metal that way when i arc the air hits it and picks it up arc air is showing 200 to 250 amps um, 5 sixteenths is the arc width after it's cut and the depth is a quarter of an inch you're not going to sit there and play with it and dig it out like you're drilling a hole it's going to be a quarter of an inch deep it's going to be 5 sixteenths wide and the rod is 3 sixteenths it don't really matter if this breaks in half you can use it in any direction you want to use it whether it's this front or the back but usually you start right here where there's no coating and like i showed earlier i'll hold that in there about halfway and what if i want to spin this in any angle i'll i'll let that lever down some that arm so that it will move just a little bit and my connection is positive lead 
constant current welding machine and my got a, mine has a post on it so I can connect right into that post some of them now I'm only going to dig a quarter of an inch deep I'm not going to hang there and make a weld I'm wanting to remove that metal quickly I've set my air pressure at 70 PSI. Okay, I cut some of this out with the uh, carbon arc and then took a grinder and cleaned out the uh, dross and whatnot that was in the way and behind this plate right here is a reinforcing pad the base metal is here and I don't know if we can see it or not I, I can barely see it there there's a fracture right here underneath this plate and it's taken off so what the plan is is to cut this weld out right here and then we'll see what's behind it because this is the root of the problem and wanting to patch this back together before the reinforcing pad goes on. Okay, after removing this plate, found this crack right here on the base metal behind the plate. Evidently this was a repair and this never got repaired. So I'm gonna bevel this out clean it out and we'll get a, a root bead in it and a filler bead and a, uh, a cap pass on this but I gotta clean it all out and I want to find out also if there's a little spot right here taken off but I gotta finish cleaning that all up and then uh, we'll get to this side there's another crack in here going this way down in there Before I start welding, this is, I consider, a high tensile strength material. So I chose 9018, low hydrogen, and I'm going to preheat it to 300 degrees before I even strike an arc. Now you might think that it's already hot because of big carbon arc, but no, I've been grinding on it, and the air from the grinders cooled it down. And I want to preheat it and make sure it stays there. I've been using a temp stick. Uh, you can use an inferred uh, light beam indicator that tells you temperature. But I started at 300 degrees before striking an arc to weld. They can't even read that. Just a single bead there was a gap in there and that's a root bead an open root bead just like one of the videos I've had and we'll do some more uphill overhead but that's it it's an open root right into that half inch plate with 9018 and I'm sure this is a higher carbon steel for this caterpillar excavator track hoe I'll just continue doing more beads. I'm not going to wash it. It'll be a two bead cap flush. And then we'll get ready. We'll grind it down a little bit and then put that reinforcing pad back on there where it was.
if I'm traveling in the left hand position going uphill, everything is the opposite. You'll swing to the right, not to the left. Update. That crack that was there and I showed you that bead, I flushed it out and I've ground it down so that it's flushed to base metal. Now I'm gonna put this plate back in here and get it in place cosmetic wires replace it where it was and then finish welding out some pieces in here and finish making these welds down in here where the cracks are also after a few days have went by and using the equipment this is what the welds look like finished this is the front right now where the welds had cracked and this is the area that I had taken the plate off and found the crack that was taking off in a different direction. But this is the finished weld after it's been used a few days and it's holding up.